domain of one's own is a way that uh, each of us can express ourselves online. Domain of one's own has allowed me to focus on my own web identity um, and also being able to relate that back to my students and how they can work on their, their own web identity. An opportunity for faculty and students to be empowered to take um, advantage of various digital tools to kind of showcase and present their identity, the work that they do in a way that is open to the world. It's also a great resource for teaching too. Um, I have my students using it to build their own portfolios. I'm using it in the classroom as a resource for building websites for students to be doing public projects. Um, so I think it's really just an open resource where we can do all kinds of creative projects. Domain of One's Own offers the opportunity to push students out into the web in ways that they have never inhabited it before. They have to grapple with some difficult questions about how the web works, about how things are built on the web, about the choices we make when we build things on the web, um, about how we find an audience for the things that we build on the web. To me, it's, it's more than just a website where, you know, it says jackhyland.net, you know, or, and I have my resume up there and stuff like that, but um, it's more of a community to me than anything else. You know, this is something that anybody can do. Anybody can sign up for a domain and get web hosting. That's not really particularly innovative in, you know, we have not reinvented the web in terms of providing that service. The way that this is innovative and this way that the way that this does allow other people to innovate is that we're doing it in a fully supported way. And it's not about saying, no, we're going to limit your choices so that you don't do something wrong. We're going to expand your choices and then give you a safety net so that if something does go wrong, we're here to help you. The LMS is the monster that ate um, higher ed IT. I think it, it's no secret that I'm not a fan of the LMS. I found that it was really unidirectional. Uh, the students got on it to find out, you know, was there a quiz to take? Okay, I'll take it. Is there a grade I can find? Okay, I found it. We keep the things that need to be behind those closed walls in the LMS and everything else should be in domain of one's own. Um, starting back in the mid to late 90s, it became our entire understanding of, of IT and instructional technology. I'm here to share knowledge. And that means, yes, of course, in the classroom. But what about when the semester ends? What about when a student leaves UMW? What if someone never came to UMW, but knows someone who was at UMW and wants to learn something? I think it's really important for what I produce to be freely available. That's what I add to the world, right? It's kind of a ethical thing, I guess you could say. When I switched to using, uh, working with WordPress and working, you know, as we developed uh, the um, UMW blogs, then Domain of One's Own, what I found was that switch from a sort of unidirectional, where's the hoop I need to jump through, to uh, a much more collaborative form of learning. And it became, I think, something that was much more student-centered and much more about them initiating the projects and much more about them controlling knowledge creation itself. The work that's done in the LMS is, is, is harder for students to control and to have access to. And, and since one of the goals of, of Domain of One's Own is for students to be able to claim their work, to proclaim boldly that this is their work. Work that's done in an LMS that, that if we don't provide uh, some way for them to get it out of that LMS, that, that's knowledge that's lost to the rest of the world. I think we do projects like Domain of One's Own a disservice when we constantly um, talk about them in relation to the LMS. It gives it even more power than it already has. Like the LMS does some things well. Um, it does administrative tasks well. Um, it does certain kinds of managerial tasks well. I'm not really interested in supplanting those tasks with a project like Domain of One's Own. I'm much more interested in looking at what Domain of One's Own does well that the LMS can't even touch. People aren't digitally literate, and, and it doesn't have to be full-blown coding or anything like that. It's just that it's beyond knowing how to operate Facebook. Digital literacy is a bare-bones kind of ability to navigate in in an, in an information age, right? Um, we have higher expectations, and we expect that, uh, that our students will be digitally fluent, that they will not just be able to uh, keep their head above water, but to, uh, but to in fact, uh, thrive in the digital world. The younger and younger people got, the less and less they knew about the digital world. 
and and, it, and it's so shocking that for something you use every single day and that not only in their own personal lives but in projects researching on the internet for uh, research papers they they don't know how it works i mean they don't understand you know how an ftp transfers on the internet they don't understand the difference that there some didn't even understand that there was a difference between the world wide web and the internet they just thought it was the same thing digital fluency uh, has to be part of that skill set that every student uh, from our department graduates with. And, and in that context, the domain of one's own is the vehicle right, uh, within which we can introduce students to the concept of digital identity, uh, introduce students to the wide variety of, of uh, tools that are required to be a successful 21st century historian or scholar of American studies. Um, and that's true even if they don't go on to be historians. There's so many people I just want to scream at that, you know, especially with digital humanities, you know, like this is the way we can actually save humanities and you guys keep sitting there arguing back and forth, what do we do, what do we do? Well, this is what we do. Like, how are you not seeing that? You know, when I first uh, started out thinking about this stuff, it was about 10 years ago when I, when I started at Mary Washington, and I remember we were talking about digital literacy and, and, and you know, in committee meetings about as testing. You know, how can we test for digital literacy? And that quickly became a conversation that immediately had us thinking that it's obsolete as soon as you think about it. And so when I think about Domain of One's Own, it's wonderful because it's about the students, I think, you know, sort of setting the parameters themselves. What can I create? And the, the boundaries are just absolutely open. And so they're the ones who are actually doing the exploration. So literacy itself, I think, is, a, is sort of a funny term. Um, it's almost too, uh, too shallow in a way. I, I think what we're looking for is creativity. And the students are already bringing that to us. Um, so literacy, I think, is, isn't ambitious enough. Um, these are skills that, that, uh, that are critical. And so the domain of one's own provides a vehicle for, um, for programs, I think, to approach um, how do we integrate digital fluency into, um, into the curricular experience. I've got my sandbox, and that's always been a powerful thing as an instructional technology specialist, to have that sandbox space where I can do anything. But knowing now that I can give that sandbox to anyone at Mary Washington and say, let's do this together, let's build something, let me show you why this is amazing. Well, I, I mean, I wish I had access to something like this when I was in sixth grade. While in the past, when faculty or students would come to us with an idea or a project, we felt really hamstrung. We didn't have a whole lot of options in terms of technologies to explore. Um, we had an LMS with sort of limited capabilities um, with with open source web hosting, suddenly um, the sky was sort of the limit. It's offered us a lot of possibilities that we didn't have before to sort of say, you know, the world's your oyster. You know, there's all these different tools and technologies out there. We can do any of it. We're not limited by the boundaries of Blackboard or the boundaries of WordPress. We really can say, what do we want to accomplish here and what's available? It allows faculty, for one, to really think about what do I actually want students to get out of this class? and to have that be their, their first thought. And then only their second thought to be, okay, now what's the technology that I need to, to get there? So it's been, it's been a great way for me to bring all my stuff together. Because I think as faculty sometimes it, it's easy for us to kind of silo all our stuff, right? To be like, okay, my research is over here and you know, my teaching is over here and then this other special class is over here and none of it talks to each other naturally. And I think in, LMSs actually make that even worse in many cases because then you're just really stuck thinking of each class as its own thing and then by semester. So literally at the end of the semester that thing shuts off or the, the links shut off. Whereas with UMW Domains, um, I've been able to bring all my stuff together so it's one holistic thing so that my research and my teaching and my blogging and all this other stuff can talk to each other. and the students have access to it, uh, colleagues have access to it both inside and outside the institution. So it means that I'm no longer this kind of fragmented person. And students can also see how their work is more than what they're doing in the classroom, how their work relates to research. Um, so it brings it into a wider context. The openness of 
of the Domain of One's Own project really emphasizes learning uh, as a community experience and, and, and an outward facing aspect to it that I think as a state institution, especially, we have a responsibility to be, to be outward facing and to show people what it is that we do and to uh, have students understand that their time here is not just um, in this closed space, but is, um, is something that's part of a larger world. This past semester in one of my classes, I have um, a student who's a, an education major as well as a history major. Many students are. And so I let her turn her term paper into an online um, curriculum unit. Uh, in addition to just writing for me, she was creating a unit that she can share with other teachers, that she can bring to uh, a job interview. It, it was something that was digital, uh, but not just for the sake of being digital, but for the sake of sharing with the community. So the idea, I think, is to find ways to um, use the digital to help enhance the curriculum, but also um, help students enhance what they're doing for something that, um, again, transcends the classroom. I think we've allowed ourselves to rely too heavily on products and vendors, um, very often products that are delivered to us by vendors who, who know very little about who we are or what our values are or what our mission is. Um, and technology isn't agnostic. You know, technology is scribed with values too. And when we choose technologies, we choose the values that are inscribed in them. And I think when we choose something like Domain of One's Own, we're choosing a very particular kind of, of value, set of values that I think underpin the very essence of what we do in higher ed. Values of openness, values of exploration, values of, of experimentation, values of individuality, um, values of community too. Understanding that the web is a network of things. It is not things in isolation. Those things are connected. Um, and and I take great hope in the fact that Mary Washington has put resources into, um, into a set of technologies that ascribe to those values.